And I've been wanting to talk to this man for about 366 days. I will explain in a moment. First, let us say hello to the man who will be headlining night one and night two of WrestleMania 40, the American nightmare himself, your friend and mine, the great Cody Rhodes. Back to finish the dark hey, story. Hey, hey. How are you, sir? How are you? How are Please you? Please have a seat. MMA fans rejoice. It's now it's now wrestling. Yeah. It's happening. You know it would be great if you came in with a, uh, a a spray can and you just like X'd out the MMA. NWO the, style, huh? The WWE hour. Oh, that would piss them off. Do you know what the spray paint made me think about was the final boss. Yes. The Rock. Dwayne Johnson. Hollywood Rock. Whatever. But the final boss specifically. This new thing we've seen. Reminds me a lot of Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Oh, interesting. It does. I don't know. I've been thinking I love about that. You're getting right into it, right? Yeah, I jumped right in. I yeah. don't know, you know. So I wasn't I just, sure where you were going with that. I jumped right in, but it's... Because, in what way? Because I don't think at the time fans expected when the Bash at the Beach incident happened, I don't think fans expected Hogan to have a whole nother thing. We had seen Hulkamania for so long right. run yeah. wild everywhere, and it was just, it was very much like... McDonald's, you know, it was a franchise thing. You did it everywhere, and and to see this added layer, even though uh, I'm not a, a fan of uh, The Rock by any means, sure. not currently in this sure, state, sure, sure. I can respect the fact that it's uh, been a very uh, unique ride, a unique build, as people like to say, on the way to WrestleMania 40. By the way, were you watching that live, 97 Bash at the Beach, or was it 96? You were there. I was there. Um, Where were you? Backstage? No, I sat in the seats. Okay, and. I will never forget it because when it happened, a little kid behind me with his dad started crying. And the dad was trying to explain to him, like, hey, no, 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 no. It's, he was really trying to, it's going to be okay. And it was just such a unique feeling in that building. But anyways, I, I went to back backstage and he's yelling at the nasty boys as he walked to his locker room. It just seems like pure chaos. And me and my sister were standing next to this just random man, and then we looked, and he was handcuffed to the door. It was one of the guys who had thrown something Come. at me and Gene. Yeah, wow. so we had just been sitting there talking to this guy who was getting ready to get, like, I don't know, beat up by the boys, or Gene was going to smack him around. But, yeah, that was uh, I was there. That and is I tremendous. drove home with my dad in the truck, and he talked a lot about what we had just seen. Wow. Yeah, and its significance. I remember that. Almost 30 years later. Dude, 30 years? Yeah. Woo! You're making kids cry because you're getting beat up, right? <laughs> That's that's uh, that's true. Yeah, I, I, um, God, I, I felt I saw that video of uh, the little girl who thought he had murdered me. Um, I saw that video and thought, oh, it won't make it that far. And then, of course, the Seven Bucks team found yeah. that that video and had to be part of the show. But uh, I'm I'm okay. I am good. Okay. So, and by the way, it's great to hear that because you have been taking a beating uh, as recently as as Monday. Sure. Like if 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 you happen to undress in front of me, I'm not asking you to, but like, what is your body? I'm just saying, it's like I feel like there's a lot of welts. No, is it? Is there's it? A, I I have a I got wrap around from the weight belt, so there's a nasty welt right here. Um, other than that, I'm pre I feel okay. I feel by Saturday Sunday I'll look myself okay. a little bit, but yeah, leaving the ring on Monday was pretty. Those weight belts bring it. Yeah, they bring it. Um, not that I'd rather get hit by a dress belt, but those weight belts just heavy, and it was my own, so insult to injury, but just a flesh wound. That's all. You know, I had a cheeky like start to this interview. I was gonna say like, so what do you want to talk about? You know, oh, I blew but, it. Then, but then you came in strong with the spray paint. Well, I did the spray paint. Then you gave me that great story about the rock. But I have to say, Cody, I have really wanted to have a conversation with you for about 366 days. It has mm. been a while. We had a nice little stretch there where we were talking every few months. You thought I didn't really like you or wasn't rooting for you. This oh, type I of told thing. your whole team. Yeah, okay. I told your whole team that I, you. It's not a. I think you like me. I hope. I right? adore you. Yes. But I think as a fan, you do not, because that's crazy. You are the. There is a demographic that really did want to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns, and and there's it's a it's a, a pocket of fans that wanted that magic. You are in that pocket. I don't know of about fans. that. I actually got into an argument with one of the guys on the show after all this happened, saying, "No, we're too invested." I I, I can, oh, okay. I'll send you. Yes, I actually fought for your behalf. Initially, yes. I was like, "Yes, I'm into it," but then I was like, "This is not right." So this is not right. I'm not going to explain this to the Rock by any means. Um, I don't need to fill the air with positives about 
The Rock. But I can say this. I think it's really gotten under his skin. The whole we want Cody thing, the dislikes on the video, all that. And I don't think he realizes that some of the people chanting diarrhea or Rocky sucks or die, Rocky die, whatever it is, some of them are wearing Rock merchandise. Mm. They, they, they still believe in the people's champ being under the final boss. They just didn't want it at the expense of, like you said, the investment, what we had been doing. And I feel like him finding that out, if he was to come on your show and reveal to you that he hates my guts, I totally understand. Mm. I get it. I, I created this situation. The fans made it even larger for me and uh, got me to the dance here. So I would get it if he didn't like me. Okay, so we'll get to that in a moment, but I do want to go back to let's LA. Let's go back. Yeah, let's go to LA. Let's go to LA. Uh, April 2nd, last year. Mm. The dust settles. Mm. You go to your bus, I presume? Yeah, long walk too. What happens when no one's watching? When perhaps you're with your family? When 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 the lights fade to black, what are you thinking? You had not won. You didn't go over. You didn't get the belt. You didn't get to finish the story. I would have bet my life that you were winning that. I was so sure that it was all going to culminate. And usually I don't like when wrestling is predictable. In this way, I think so many people wanted to see that happen. What happens when it's all kind of marinating and digesting? I mean, I, I joke that it was a long walk. The reason I say that is because it was long in duration, but also the feeling of walking by a lot of the building workers saying, great job, get them next time, just kind of these random things as I'm passing people by. I, I walked with Brandy, um, and we didn't have any words between each other, but when I got to my bus, uh, I had a, a nice moment with, with DDP because he hated it. But also, we just main evented at WrestleMania. But also, we're not the type to be happy with just main eventing at WrestleMania. I, I get it. If you had asked me when I was doing Stardust, I'd give my left finger to main event WrestleMania. But once I was in there, I realized I don't want to just main event WrestleMania. I want to win in the main event of WrestleMania. So it's incredibly long, just blue, somber, melancholy. But I wanted to quickly move out of it, and uh, someone I spoke to, I don't know if he likes me mentioning him or not, but I spoke to John Cena about this thing, this exact thing, and that was probably the best advice, not just because of the advice itself, because it was someone who had the experience, someone who had been to the top. I didn't, you know, it would have been a great call to make to my dad, didn't have that choice. So I had, I had John to kind of present me with the challenge, and the challenge that presented me with was just be the champion without the belt. Right, and here's your barometers. Look at your merch. Look at your ticket sales when the last live event versus the time you're there this time. Would look at everything, and that will keep you honest. That will let you know: Are you the champion without the belt? And uh, that was a good challenge he presented with me. Hopefully, after WrestleMania 40, I as silly I guess oxymoronic as this sounds, I would love to be the champion with the belt. Right. Yes. That conversation with John, does that happen after? It did. Yep. 39, that night? Uh, just a day later. Okay. Day. Yep. So did you understand, you, you mentioned DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. Yeah. He was upset. Did you understand why so many people were upset with how it all went down? Yeah, my mother-in-law, uh, Jill Reed, be beautiful, beautiful Jill. Hello, Jill, if you're watching. Uh, she tore, tore down the suite they were all in, basically, cursing, screaming. They, they were, it was... That high stakes of a situation, WrestleMania 39, and for those who are from the MMA world who, who maybe don't understand fully pro wrestling, there are parts of it that are so much more real than you can ever imagine. And that was just a real moment for everybody. And, I, and that's why I, I walked up the ramp. I'm not, I'm supposed to walk sideways, what, what they lovingly call loser's lane, which huh. is my favorite. Side ramp is a better way to put it. But I walked up the ramp specifically so that I could look at as many people as possible just with like a, it's okay. It's going to be okay. And I was able to do that. So yeah, that was a, bringing me back. It was a, it was a rough night. <laughs> so I struggle with asking you this next question just uh -oh. because of the respect that I have for what you do for what the business is. I will never ask you a crazy question. Like, can you put me in this move or are you going to win? I, I would never do that. That's not me. But 
the journalist in me yeah. has a few things that I would love to ask you about because I haven't seen you address any of these things. So I just want to let you ask know, which I don't usually do, is like if you don't feel comfortable answering these questions, I totally understand where you're coming from. Oh, I, uh, I feel like I can, I can weave this. I, I'm good. What do you got? When did you find out that you weren't winning on Sunday night, April right. 2nd? So it's a, it's, a, it's a great question, and I'm of the thought that there's a movie, uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Have you ever seen it? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a quote in there that I keep getting wrong, but when the fact becomes a legend, print the legend. So for the purpose of this answer and that question, what I'll tell you is I found out in the ring, in the moment that he hit me with a spear and pinned me one, two, three. That's when I found out. But surely there was a conversation beforehand. I would say not surely. Not surely? I would say not surely. But you, I, can't, I can't go any further fair on enough. that question. Okay, fair enough. Tried. Uh, what did you think when the fact became a legend? I, I truly did look at it um, from the perspective of I, I wanted to be the quarterback. I wanted to, to have the ball. Um, so, so I didn't get the ball. So what do you do in that scenario? Kind of go back to my old ways, which is, that's going to sound crude, but make them pay. Make them, make them understand that, that, that that's not the way. That, that the way should have been this. But that was, again, it, it really intersected and worked in conjunction with what John told me, the challenge of being the champion without the belt. The first, I, I, like I said, I thought for sure you were going to win and it was going to be amazing. The first time that I had like a sort of doubt in my brain was actually when we did a sit down for then BT Sport on the Thursday in that like weird loft. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, low energy sit down. I felt like you were down. Low energy sit was, down. Am, am I right about that? I was, I was down, but it wasn't, it was a... Uh, I started to think like, why is he so... No, the WrestleMania week, I'll okay. just, just be honest, WrestleMania week last year had defeated me. Okay. I was so excited, main eventing WrestleMania, and I went to every every outlet, everybody who had a camera, everybody who had a mic, I went everywhere. And by the time I got to you, I was just at a low energy. I even saw some of the comments, like, he seems sad. He seems, it, I, I wasn't. Okay. It was just, just low energy. And, and I don't think people realize that, you know, WrestleMania is the Super Bowl, what we do with pro wrestling and sports entertainment. These guys load you up. Right. Right. You know, and, and that's part of what we're supposed to do. We're, th this is the show that the world is watching. Um, but yeah, I was just, the, the week had defeated me. Have I was you, also on a all shrimp and asparagus diet, and that might have just led to me just being curmudgeon. Have you learned from that? Like this time around, less media? Yep. So today's the media. Today's the media. We've had a blast. Today's show, first take with my man Stephen A., here at the MMA hour, which we are lovingly calling the wrestling hour yes. for five minutes. Yes. And then I am going to get my gym session in, get on my bus, and- And that's it. Just 100%. Thank you, WWE, by the way. What I love about it Thank symbolically you. is you moved up with every stop, like Today Show, Stephen A. You Helwani. like the build? Yeah, you no, like I thought build? you like main event. It was last, right? You know, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, so you clearly have learned from that, and, and yeah. you feel- like it's making a difference? Do you feel fresher? Do you feel less stressed? Mm. Eh. No. Okay. Because, I mean, like, let's put in like a perspective here for you. You've always loved the inner, like sports entertainment, WWE, WWF, all that stuff. This is WrestleMania 40. Yeah. 40 years of WrestleMania. It's a celebratory. It's a 10 year. You know, there's always something special at a 10 year. And I'm main eventing night two, amazing. I'm also main eventing night one with a returning rock after 12 years away from the ring. I'm not gonna tell you it's defeating me, but I'd be a fool to say that that's not an unbelievable amount of pressure. An unbelievable, the, these are the two most important main events in company history and somehow a Rhodes snuck into them. I, uh, I need to execute, mm. you gotta hit the ball. Uh, so, so it's a lot of pressure. So I could rest, I could do less media, I could do all that, and I still feel, you know, just the, the angst of it all. So uh, I remember going to the, uh, the Raw after Mania on that Monday. <laughs> I'm so sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got beat up quite bad. And I'm like, okay, and, and I will say, honestly, 
I was I was I was sad for you. Yeah. And again, people could call me a mark. You, I I I really thought the stars had had aligned. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, let me just see how this plays out. And then it, you know, we get to May, we get to June, mm. and the thought that just kept creeping back into my brain, which I've said a million times on this show and others, is, is, yes, they made a mistake. Roman's nowhere to be found. He's hardly working. Why couldn't they have just put the belt on you? Why did you rob us of this moment? Why did we get robbed of seeing you do this? And why did you get robbed of the moment? It mm. didn't make any sense to me. Now, I will say, Mia culpa, everything worked out. I think it's fantastic mm. the way the story has built to this weekend. But I'm just wondering if you had that same thought. All right, like, did we screw this up? Am I going to plateau? Am I going to get stale? He's mm. not here. There's no champion. We have to create a second belt, maybe because of his absence. Yeah. This could have been fixed very easily. Just have, you know, have the guy get the belt, the one that everyone wanted to see. Did that thought cross your mind maybe once, twice, three times? We did a we did a SmackDown segment. I think it might have been the last SmackDown. It was a face-to-face -face with Roman and I. Maybe it was the first time we'd ever gone face-to-face. -face. Either way. I remember him specifically saying um, that what happens if you don't win? Are you going to run away like you did the last time? And man, nothing has... There were two things he said in that interview. I remember him saying, you started a company that you couldn't get over in. And I remember, mm, because I don't want to use the word over, but my popularity is one of the reasons that company ever existed. Uh, and then, or was created, excuse me, and then he said the thing about, are you going to run away? And mm, it, it hurt, and then when the impulse, or just the thought, because we, we're complicated people, you know, the thought of, what if I did, right? What if, I, what if I'm the laughing stock of the industry and I did decide to hightail it again and, and, and do something radical or disruptive? But it felt like it was the time in my life to really forgo, like forgetting about WrestleMania, just from that moment on, it seemed like a call to action for me, a true, real call to action. This is the guy. This is the most important wrestler in my generation in this renaissance era of sports entertainment. And he's asking me and telling me at the same time what he thinks is going to happen. I'd like to prove him wrong. And so how would you describe this past year for you without, you know, being champion? Yeah. You're here, like, kind of a good year, bad, frustrating year, uh, a rewarding year. How would you describe the past 366? Um, I'd say uh, it very much was a year filled with proving him wrong. And the cherry on top of it all was being the first guy since Stone Cold Steve Austin, who I have so much respect for Stone Cold Steve Austin. It just... The man, right? A lot of guys have Stone Cold on their Mount Rushmore, rightfully so. To be the first guy to go back to back at a Royal Rumble and do that. Oh man, that that to me was the cherry on top of I kept it. I kept the people who were there with me at WrestleMania 39 and we've not only kept them, but we've grown and we've grown. And I think I've been saying this this morning and this is just how I feel. I if I didn't believe, right? And I know some people have been like, it doesn't sound like he believes he's gonna beat Roman and win Roman, even if I didn't believe. These fans believed so much that they turned away the rock of all people for me to get a shot at finishing the story. So this whole WrestleMania, you know, all he dedicated to Dusty, he dedicated to his daughter Liberty, all those things, yeah, but it's also dedicated to the fans. This is a fan-created WrestleMania truly is that's not always been the case mm -hmm. um and uh and i owe it to them to i hate the term but finish the story why do you hate the term because i didn't finish the story when i was using it the first time okay then it just became everybody's got a story we're finishing this story finish that story then the 2k people god bless them love 2k i'm so proud i was on the yes, cover congratulations. Ripley and bianca cover stars uh the finish the story becoming the theme of the game just just truly overwhelming because what if I never do? Right. What a joke. Like I'm a, I hate self-deprecating here, but I'd be a joke if I didn't, right? Put a but lot of pressure is, on myself right It now. is special though that a, a term is now associated oh, with you in that regard. Man, right? I put it up there. I put it up there. Finish the story. I'm glad it's something that caught. 
uh, FTR, I was glad that was something that caught. Bullet Club is fine. There were these things that I have said. I don't know. I've had luck with yeah. these little things. Finish the story, obviously, being the biggest uh, of them all that they caught on and they, they did something. So hopefully I can pay it off. Who was the first one to ever say it? Finish the story? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give the credit to my main man at the desk. The voice of WWE, Michael Cole. Really? Yeah. Do you remember when? No, I don't have like a notebook. Well, I don't know. Here. Maybe no, I mean that's a pretty. You're big the one deal. with the computer. No, I, I, I believe. So it was written on my weight belt at the Royal Rumble in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. It might have been said in an interview like this. Okay. I don't think it was ever said in a programming sense from WDB. And Michael said it Got after it. I won that Royal Rumble. Okay. Uh, when I pointed the sign, they blew a bunch of pyro up, and then they also blew up a bunch of not real pyro, like AI pyro. Oh my. And I, they've never done that again. You didn't like it? Uh, well, it, it taints the video for me. Okay. <laughs> it taints the video. I, I, you know, every now and then you need a little boost. Sure. You, you know, like it taints the video for me. When you first caught wind that The Rock was coming back in some way, shape, or form, what did you think? I kept telling everybody, not flinching. Right? I said everybody, not flinching. And you were, yeah, I saw you tweet right away. Oh, it's happening. On. No, no, no. It's happening. That wasn't me. Rock, Rock I was, was hacked. <laughs> I was hacked. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I, I really meant it not flinching. And I'll, I'll tell you something even crazier. After I had conceded the main event of WrestleMania to The Rock, still somewhere in here, this sounds so weird, maybe naive, maybe arrogance, I still thought, I'm gonna find my way there. I still thought that. And it's one of the reasons I stayed dead silent. I didn't, I didn't want to make a, put an opinion on it. I don't want to get into the backstage details of it or anything of that nature. Uh, what was out there is what was out there. I just felt like I was still going to make it. And then thankfully, you know, literally millions of people made it so that I did get back. So the, the, the feat of going back to back at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. How much does that mean to you? I mean, do you like collect awards for yourself? Uh, sure, 14 what, straight, by the way, here. So, yeah. right. That's it's, a big deal. It's huge. So it can go on, it's on your resume, it's on your, your, your legacy, your report card, whatever it might be. As a pro wrestler, you have to collect accolades. Ric Flair is the X amount of time champion, Roman Reigns for X amount of days. And as a former independent wrestler, mm. It was really important during that period, you were always your, your biggest self-promoter. You were touting yourself. You were having to put your success out there because a lot of people didn't believe it. They wouldn't, you know, there's always discussion on wrestling. If you say such a judge is the best, it becomes this big, nasty discussion, right? When really the best part is just put your stuff forward. Put your stuff forward, which after the rumble, that's why I kind of went into some details, a lengthy explanation as to why I felt like I was in the position uh, you know, that I wanted to be in and on the road to where I wanted to be ultimately. But it means, it means the world. It's, it's um, time. As time goes on, wrestlers fade away. One of the things I've, I've, I've noticed about WrestleMania 40 is uh, you have The Rock who used to, his dad used to team with my dad, Rocky Johnson, and my dad were tag team partners. Uh, you have... Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, two dusty kids who my dad helped train at FCW and NXT. And then you have his actual son. So he has like his handprint all over WrestleMania. That's what I'm trying to do now. You know, create enough that, that, that I used to joke with my friends all the time, live forever. You want to live forever. And that's, that's one of those stats. I'm like, that one will live forever. I'm, I'm on a short list of guys who have gone back to back. Sometimes I feel a little bit uncomfortable with how much we ask you about your father. Oh my God, so am I. Okay, so <laughs> can I explain why? Uh, no, no, that's all good. Well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, lucky enough to have both my parents still alive, yeah. and I think that we just take for granted, like, oh, like your dad's like some character that we. It's yeah. not a movie. This is your actual father, mm -hmm. who unfortunately is no longer in your life, and people speak of him so much yeah. and always in such high regard, but. I think sometimes we forget, like, you're a little kid and that's your dad and yep. you adore him. And I'm sure there's nothing you would rather more than to have him here with you. Yeah. And and you would probably trade all of this just to have him here with you. And so I'm wondering, do you feel like that is taken for granted? Do, do you feel uncomfortable at times with how much he has to be discussed on air hmm. as part of the build for matches like this? 
No, I, I don't necessarily feel that uncomfortable in terms of, especially when somebody who knows him talks about him, because they're talking about him from a different perspective. You know, Mr. Heyman has a different outlook on uh, Dusty than I have um, as his son. I think uh, yes, uh, Stephanie McMahon hit me with this line last year, and I, I've never forgot it. I was asking her about things to say in my interview, or she, she had mentioned my interview and we were talking about it, and I remember her just saying, use everything. Use everything you have, you know, because uh, that's what it takes in terms of a WrestleMania main event. Every bit of your, like, when you talked to me last year and I was completely a zombie, like, that's because I was pouring my guts out, which includes uh, the pain of the loss of Dusty, but then also his his story. This is 100% a real thing. He wrestles superstar Billy Graham. He wins the title by, by count out. And then obviously you can't win the title that way, but he's holding the belt and all that. And they took it away from him. And understandable. I get that. The champion keeps the title. They're doing two more matches. But as his son, I, I wanted to have that for him. And I also wanted to have it for me. Because, again, we're talking about stats and things like that. Yeah, this is the same guy who I'd play basketball with every day, a game of horse, and would I never won, not even close. Uh, so you want those things that hey, I got something you know, that he didn't. You know, I'm I'm. There's that meme for a long time, like, what do you know about Cody Rhodes? And I'm Dusty Rhodes' son. Can't be the only thing. Mm. You know, it can't be. And uh, and things like the Royal Rumble, things like WrestleMania, um, just the whole American nightmare, the whole thing, all these young fans, all the whole thing is inc I'm incredibly lucky to, to be in this spot and be able to have as many chances as, as I've had because I started as such garbage. And and again, I started way too early. Like I'm in this tag team with Sean Spears. They should have got Spears. Instead, they pulled me up because of my speech at the Hall of Fame. I just wasn't ready. So for fans to forgive that lack of readiness over and over and over and over again for me to finally start to click, uh, that's... Uh, Again, the WrestleMania is entirely for them. Do you, do you remember your dad ever telling you how much it bothered him that he was never WWF champion? So what I remember, straight honest, honesty here, I never remember him telling me he was bothered. I just remember how much he talked about those three matches. Hmm. And those were only three matches. He wrestled the Nature Boy Ric Flair a thousand times. He wrestled Harley Race probably 500 times. But those three matches with Superstar, the garden, I think the one thing that he felt maybe was above his, out of his orbit was at the time the WWWF and then the WWF. Because when I would later talk about Ultimate Warrior or Hulk Hogan, he'd always have to slide in there and remind me like, hey, Hulk Hogan was a huge fan of mine. He mm. came to the Sportatorium and he, I mean, he came to the Fort Hesterly Armory and all these places and he's a, he a big, big fan of mine. He always had to let me know and I believed him. I believed him, um, but I just, I, I feel like his whole journey when he, you know, he decided not to stay in the superstar and uh, the Vince kind of situation they had going on there and he moved on to Crockett and to become the executive producer and the booker and matchmaker and all that, this big disruptor in the industry and then to fight the battles of WCW and WWF, ultimately WWE and WCW, I just, I don't know. I feel like we're, uh, sorry, I'm just all over the map. No, here. no, it's good. But I feel like we're the kind of this uh, outcast family in the wrestling industry. And uh, one of the things about my song, it says wrestling has more than one royal family. For that to really be true, I have to be Roman Reigns. For that to really be true, because that's the greatest family. You saw that. Yeah, yeah. You saw that chart. All yeah. of us saw it. It's intimidating enough. Five of the names, not not to mention the other 50 on there. But for that to be true, I have to be Roman Reigns. Uh, since coming back to uh, WWE, it's been two years now, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's been an incredible run. And it's like every step is more impressive than the next. But dare I say, perhaps your most impressive moment, honestly, was after the Rumble. You're sitting at the dais. And I think those press conferences can be a little bit funky at times. Yeah. If only because like you don't know in character, out of character, who's asking what, how to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, I don't envy you guys in no. those spots. I think, um, you know, for the most part, they're fun to watch, but I know it's tough. Yeah. And this is two days after the 
Vince lawsuit comes out. Mm. And I thought how you spoke from the heart, and it was like you were trying to digest it all, and yeah. you were trying to say, like, we're, we're trying to give people a reason to be happy, but this sucks. I can't even paraphrase yeah. it, but you did such a good job in that moment. And that's when I, I looked at you yeah. and I was like, this is the guy that should be the face of the company. This is the guy that you put on the Tonight Show and say he can lead the way because you thought, I'm sure maybe in the back of your mind, you thought maybe someone would ask you, but a yeah. lot of that had to have been somewhat off the cuff. I was so impressed with how you handled that question. Oh, th that's just a statement for me. No, I just want to give you props for that. Uh, thank you. I, maybe it's a little bit of, I, I, you know, I did have some management and executive training. Maybe you I, still, you still I, have I to knock it out of the park. You still have to speak from the heart and make it seem what, genuine I and think, authentic and real. I think that's it. Like you just have to, you have to be truthful in those moments. You, 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 you really do. And I think everybody that night was actually attempting to be truthful in their own way, but sometimes you have to, you know, call it what it is and not and not shy away from it. But I, uh, I'm glad that I was was able to answer that, and 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 you know that those those press conferences. I, I'm not sure if you've realized this. Those are some of my favorite things ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like a top ten career moment is me and Jay Uso uh, at that presser after fast lane just just an absolute top 10 career moment for me because it was so ridiculous and stupid and i had been for so long just almost political almost robotic and you know i still had like a little bit of that in me and then for that him to kind of bring me out of my shell and loosen me up is a really fun moment so i enjoy those press conferences they can be difficult right uh, but i do enjoy them two months later how yeah. do you how do you feel about everything that is unraveling with with vince this lawsuit and his his legacy, his presence in the company. Well, I like to think of, uh, you know, today whenever there's a you know an accusation or or anything of that nature, it's very important that you you don't shame the accuser. You don't shame you know because people were quick to do that sometimes. Uh, but I also am not a legal personnel. I'm not in law enforcement of any kind. I like to just kind of see it how it play out from a legal court situation did someone break the law is is there guilt is there is there a pun punishment is it not all that to say that that's why i really don't i i don't want to be naive to it but i i put my focus solely on how do we make the show the best show possible you know the excitement over netflix the excitement over wrestlemania 40 the rock returning so i don't have a lot of time to focus on that, but I, I am looking at it like everybody else in a sense of uh, hopefully there's a resolution that that uh, that justice is is brought for whomever, if that makes any sense. Can you say unequivocally that he has no influence, no presence in the company at the moment? I mean, I, I don't know if I could say it. I know he hasn't. From your perspective. I would say, I would say it's, it's Nick and Hunter. Uh, the reason I asked this yeah. is because Rhonda put out a tweet saying, you know, as long as certain people are around... Yeah. He's a text away, things of that nature, and that raised some eyebrows. I'm not disputing anything she said or anything of that nature, but in my experience, um, I've dealt with just Nick and Hunter for, for a really long time. Uh, and the company is clearly changing directionless. He's, him, him not being present, you're seeing the production change and thing, just differences in the programming. But Nick and Hunter have been my guys. How, how are things with Paul Levesque? I, I'm shocked to say that they're... I guess I'm not shocked to say, but I never anticipated when we did, you know, breaking of the throne. I think I said pissant bodybuilder at one point mm -hmm. in one of my, you know, independent, it may have been an AEW rant, something, all of it rattling the cages, all of it in the spirit of trash talk and sports entertainment. But we take this stuff personally. It gets under our skin. He really had no reason to, to take care of me. Uh, and he has just been an incredible guide, an incredible mentor. Often I'll be standing in Gorilla when something else is on the show, and I'll just look at him, and there's an understanding. There's a knowledge of, oh, that was great, or that wasn't, or what can we do here? Um, you know, if, uh, if I do continue a career in sports entertainment and pro wrestling, um, yeah, I've not shared this with anybody. I've not even shared that with him, but I, I really would, if I was to continue and it was in a backstage environment, I'd like to kind of 
perhaps follow in those footsteps. I have a great amount of experience, good and bad, uh, and I can I could I could put it to use. We're not we're not there yet. I was just uh, gonna ask. <laughs> in your mind, is there uh, an age? That well, you... I used to say I used to say I used to say forty, but then like I'm just at my absolute best now, and and I I don't know. No, I don't have a number anymore. But I, I definitely is very important. Uh, I know this is not everyone's favorite, but I'm definitely really of the thought that I don't want my daughter to be ten years old and me and be on the road full time as I am now. You know, when when we get to that, I mean, every age is important, but when you get to those memory making years, uh, I want to have provided enough for the family just to call it. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean call it in a sense that I wouldn't be wrestling, but maybe I'd be wrestling at a different schedule. Uh, but right now, right now, uh, it's it's not a secret. I did sign a new deal recently. It's still kind of uh, all being ironed out, but we're we're done with it. And uh, that would uh, that would put me in a great spot by the end of it. How many years is that deal for? I can't tell you. Why is that? Why is everyone so shy to say the years? I'm not asking you how much. I'm just asking how many years. I can't tell you how much either. Well, I, I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't dare. How much do you think it is? Um, 20 mil? So uh, I like to consider myself that... Well, now I can't say this joke anymore. Oh. I was going to say I want to consider myself the Otani oh, of uh, nice. sports entertainment, but he's in trouble right yeah, now, you right? Can, yeah, you don't want to... Dang it. Whose else is really highly paid? Um, I mean, LeBron James? Yep. I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Where were you when you found out CM Punk was coming back? I don't remember. Um, again, uh, I hope I, I hope these guys don't get mad at me for sharing this. No one gets mad. Again, no one's watching either. Nick and Hunter both, you know, uh, told me, got my opinion, all this, and uh, so I was ready going into. Uh, the uh, the war games in Chicago there in Allstate, which was amazing because we had the minimalist set, just people on top of people, uh, and for him to come out and return in the fashion, I was really happy for him. Were you shocked when they told you this was happening? No, not at all. Y you knew when he left? Nah, because I, I feel like uh, I feel like both Nick and Hunter really have their their finger on the pulse. So e even if there was some bad business in the past or some whatever, like I mentioned, the things that I had said. Nick, for me, I know he looked at me and explained to WWE at management at the time, hey, here's what Cody is and here's what he can do for us. I think he did the same. And I, looking at it from my perspective of WWE in this renaissance era, as hot as it's ever been, why wouldn't we want CM Punk, right? The, the, I get to share the Royal Rumble and have that moment with CM Punk, somebody who's one of the most important superstars of my generation. I got to throw him out of the Rumble. Just, I think he's a great addition to the locker room. I feel terrible that he tore his tricep. I look forward to, he's got a whole, whole run ahead of him. Uh, and he's, he's just been wonderful since he came back. I'm not sure if you heard, but he was in that chair, sitting in that chair on Monday. Yeah, that's what I was going to say yeah. is like, you had CM Punk. Yes. You had Becky. Last week. Becky, yeah. who's hopefully about to be a best-selling author. Uh, Rhea Ripley was on here. There's a whole situation, you know. Brawl, yeah. Who's next? Uh, well, you were. I mean, you were, you're the cherry on top. Just Am like I we the built final up before WrestleMania, just like you did today. Yeah, show, yeah, uh, yeah. You're you're the last this one. This is the go home to WrestleMania. This is the 40. go home. This Love is, it. That's what I actually tweeted right before we went live. The nice. go home show. Nice. Um, and so uh, he was sitting here on on Monday, and we spoke about a lot of things. And I'm I'm very curious to ask you about just a couple of those things that he talked about. Um, you know, he was the the run in AEW obviously didn't didn't end on a good note. Yeah. And uh, I would never ask your side of those stories because you weren't there. That's not fair. I was not. But he spoke about what it's like to work there mm -hmm. and in particular said, Tony's a nice guy, but he's not a boss. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment from your perspective working with him? I, I mean, that's his assessment. It, it is not my assessment. Um, it's, it's always important for me to remind people that I am so proud of what me, Matt, Nick, Kenny, Tony, Bernie, Brandy, and Dana, and Chris. And I name all these people because I was in those meetings. As much as the internet will try to spin a narrative one way, if one of those people had not been at that startup level, the company would not have happened. And I am so proud of what was created. I am so insanely proud of what it does for the industry overall for, for, for wrestlers and their well-being and their ability to feed their families. And I have an unbelievable love for so many people in that 
locker room, including the Bucks, including Kenny, who we're bonded forever over this thing that we did. So it's not my assessment. Uh, in my time there, uh, the infrastructure was just being built up. We were, we were trying new things and doing things. It was a startup company, a big time startup company, but a startup company. And uh, I, I wish them nothing but the best. His his sort of um, his take on the elite, the Bucks, yeah. etc., and how they were towards him, not happy with him being there, as as he yeah. put it, and the stuff that he says, you know, Hangman did going off script and and all that stuff. Does this sound like something that they would do? Like when you, when you are hearing about all this, are you like, this doesn't seem right? What's going on here? Why is this not meshing? Or or perhaps did you foresee some of these issues happening given the personalities involved? No, I don't. I don't think I foresaw any of the issues. I did kind of predict, it was unrelated to those guys, but I do remember predicting that there was gonna be certain guys who had been there who wanted to wave the banner and hey, you've not been here, and then brand new guys, because you always need fresh blood, and like Punk coming back to WWE, it's a great call, but I think those always would mesh. I just think what happened there is a ton of misunderstanding, a ton of miscommunication, uh, you will see on indies and wrestlers that aren't properly trained, and I'm not talking about bullying etiquette or anything like that, but you do need to have a little old school in you to know the collaborativeness of what this is. And I just think they were ships in the night. I I know I was Switzerland the last time you asked me. I love Matt, Nick, and Kenny, and I love CM Punk. I don't know how, but I I, I, I do. I'm in, I, I have just happy for everyone involved. And uh, yeah, I just think it was a ships in the night thing. I wasn't there though, so. Before re-signing with WWE, did you consider going back or testing the waters or anything like that? I'm talking Man. like the deal you just signed now. Be- oh, oh. Um, like no. nice little two year run. Okay, I'm good. Did that thought cross your mind? No, and, and, and it's not in any way a negative uh, towards them. It just, I know I didn't win the title at WrestleMania 39, but I was in the spot I'd always dreamed of. And I know how lucky I am to be in the spot when I see a poster and there I am front and center amongst some other unbelievably talented people. When I see the 2K24 cover, when I see the responsibility, they didn't hand me the exact ball and say, hey, you're the quarterback, but they certainly gave me a lot of responsibility, that being Nick, that being Hunter. Uh, I, I feel that it would have been just against my being because I, I was slotted there. You helped put me there, and now I'm making something of it, and I'm growing it beyond what you thought it could be. Uh, I wanted to keep doing that for them. So it just didn't cross my mind, not in a negative towards any other places. I just, this is what I've enjoyed doing. I think as a wrestler, you always try to pretend you're interested, like, hey, yeah. you know, but no. Okay, so you win the Rumble in late January. Early February, Rock reappears. He does. You have a moment in the ring. Can I ask you a question, by the sure, way? Sure, sure. Uh, now I'm getting to the meat. So be, because okay. because I sat in this chair yeah. and I didn't wear the jacket, do yeah. I look fat? No, you look fantastic. Okay, because I keep doing I look the like card. a schlub next to you. You've got a three-piece on. I, but I took the jacket off I know, but just this, for a little informal. And no, I tell they're like, I look... You yeah, think doing, it's bunching up a little bit? I just look kind of tubs. But, no, no, you look great. I'm really lean, guys. Um, 9% this morning, by the way. Is that true? On the BF, yep. Man, you look great. Yep. It's that shrimp it's and... It's cod and asparagus this year. <laughs> okay. Cod and asparagus. That's the folks. answer. Yep. Um, what does he say to you in the ring? CM Punk? No, The Rock. You know what I'm talking about, right? He comes back, you have a small conversation, you mm. walk out and say, I'm going to stand back. I would rather I would rather him tell you. Well, I don't know if I could. Can we get uh, The Rock on the phone? I would, rather, yeah. I would rather The Rock tell you. DJ? Because uh, it was something, if this is, and this is the best answer I can give you was something that was extremely touching. But what was being taken away from me was so weighing on my mind that I felt a negative about what was probably a positive thing being said to me. Hmm. And uh, I think he'll come on MMA Hour yeah. at some point. Okay. The Rock, the final boss will be, he can tell you what he said, but I, I'll leave that for uh, for him. So. Uh, you walk out of the uh, the ring that night, mm-hmm. and like everyone's showing, you know, screen grabs on Twitter. Like, look how mad he is. Look yeah, how sad he is. Yeah, a lot of sad faces. Yeah, yeah. What is your reaction to the reaction? 
when you see all this on that Friday night and then you see that video apparently become the most disliked video in WWE YouTube history. Why did you say apparently? I think it really was. I don't even know how you, how, how, do you, how does one even like look at it? I mean, it up? was an absurd. Yeah, yeah, it was an absurd. Was I just don't know how, like, is there not a video from nine years ago or something? There but, probably. <laughs> uh, the point is like, what are you thinking? How is, you know, what's your reaction to this insane reaction to something being done to you, you being wronged in the fans' eyes? I just wanted to be quiet in all of this, in all, in all of the noise. I really wanted to be quiet because at that point, again, it may be arrogance and it may be me being naive. At that point, I felt like, no, like, I've done everything. Something, I kept thinking something good is going to happen from this terrible situation. Something good is going to come. And I remember I talked to Diamond Dallas Page, who, uh, God, I love D. But he said, no matter what happens, it will be the best thing that ever happened to you. And when you're a pessimist and a curmudgeon, angry type like I am, and he's the most positive human being on the planet, you kind of want to be like, God, dude, stop. But he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. Because imagine had I not been in the WrestleMania 40 main event the fire would still be burning. If not, it would be completely out of control at this point. But we didn't even have to do that because Hunter heard it. He heard what was going on. It's a different time in WWE. Um, you know, as far as WWE and pro wrestling and sports entertainment, you have to lead the audience. You can't, you can't let them in, entirely lead the show because then it becomes a choose your own adventure book and nobody buys those. But in the case of that, that was something that was so loud he had to hear it, and it just, I was very lucky again to be in that spot. When it seemed in those few days that it was going to be Rock versus Roman, what was the new plan for you? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to, again, you got to get, get Nick Paul in here. Paul on the Paul, show. Uh, You're booking a great show for me at some point. I don't, I, I, I don't know. And it was a, it was a whirlwind because it was such a hit. It was such a, it was such a hit, but also, you know, I had, a, I was on the road with uh, both, uh, both Brandy and Liberty, uh, and uh, I, I didn't want to be a negative thing in their, in their orbit, in their space. So, yeah, I don't know what the plan was. I never, I never heard it. <laughs> and so what, what is fascinating about this is, like, we've had some moments where, you know, Kofi gets sort of propelled yeah. to the top by the fans. Daniel Bryan gets yeah. propelled. Becky, to a degree, a few yeah. years ago, propelled. And now I feel like, okay, they were so mad about last year, yeah. but now this— this is so much more personal for the fans because they feel some ownership in the story. They feel like they kind of helped make this happen. Do you feel that as well? They did. They did. They did make it happen. Do you know how? Do you know how bad I feel when I go on my bus and look at the weight belt that you gave me last huh. year? This unbelievable nice gift that your team got me, saying finish the story, and I didn't finish the story. I've never felt an energy like I felt. All the way back to when the on sale for WrestleMania happened, I went to Philadelphia, went to the stadium for the on sale itself, and I did a media day. There were people on the streets yelling, like, I just bought my tickets, finish the story. This is, you know, I've, I've been through wrestling on the high times and the low times just to get the, you know, the TSA cat. Hey, man, I hope the belt's in your bag next time. Just the whole feeling going into this, they propelled this main event into existence. That doesn't just mean me and Roman Reigns, that also means The Rock in this role he's in now. So the fans who did all this, again, this WrestleMania is for them. T truly, it's fully propelled by fan sentiment, grassroots meets the biggest sports entertainment conglomerate on the planet. Again, I'm acknowledging that I'm asking you some things about the curtain and you can proceed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're asking some tough ones. Well, well the thing is, I feel a responsibility because a what's, journalist. what's so good about this storyline, yeah. about this, this, this build is that there's so much gray. It's like, what is, you know what I mean? What's Those are the best, right? Those are the, like that guy right there, Bret Hart. What was so great about that moment in 97? You weren't quite sure what was going on, sure. right? People still aren't sure what exactly. was Exactly. Yeah. And so could I ask like, was there an audible called? What Was the plan at some point, Rock versus Roman, they listened to the fans and an audible was called and this decision was made the the tag team on night one and then and then you on night two. I'll stand I'll stand by this again, and it's not what you want to hear, but I will say this. Whatever happened backstage, whatever the plan was, whatever the pivot could be, whatever the pivot that did happen or didn't happen, what's on television to me has been 
far more compelling. So it, it's just an area I don't like to look at or I guess talk about solely because what's happened on Raw, on SmackDown, in this, as people say now, the build uh, is the legend. And I'd rather, I'd rather go with the legend of it all. Uh, I you would know? add, you, you say Raw SmackDown, I would add social media as well. Because yeah. every Friday, Dude. Rock is dropping these like 20 minute it. promos. This is incredible. Hey. Did you know that he had this in him still in, in 2024, 51 years old? Like we, we, we've seen Bad Rock, we've seen Hollywood Rock, Corporate Rock, yeah. but that was in like 98, 99. Did you know he still had this in him? Dropping F-bombs, left, right, and center. I think, uh, I think The Rock has become so many things. Movie star, billionaire, philanthropist, business owner, presidents of divisions, Under Armour, The Connection, all that stuff. And if you strip it away, the thing he is the most is a pro wrestler. And I don't have to like him, and I really genuinely don't like The Rock. But I have all the respect in the world for, I can spot another pro wrestler, and he's one. It's, it's in there. And remember, I'm watching him versus Triple H in a ladder match as they're both on their way up, and I'm seeing The, the Rock as, you know, I, I always tell, tell people at my school and stuff, nobody in our generation is over, but here's who's over, The Rock, John Cena. I use those examples. So if you ever could pull that trick, if you ever could get the fans to buy into you and believe you at the level that a rock did, at the level that a Stone Cold did, clearly you can do it again. So it doesn't surprise me uh, the fun he's having. It also doesn't surprise me because he has 60 people <laughs> around him at all times. I thought it was him and Brian. Also. Oh my gosh, yeah. Brian's there, but it's what a team he's developed. We really are a product of of the team you put around me. I have a small team, you know, they're not as, uh, you know, we don't roll as deep as him, but it's important. Those people that, that prop you up and support you and like the rock is built up by that team. He has a great team. I'm not even knocking. It's just hilarious. That content's going to happen, folks. They're going to get it. He's just always there to deliver and, and, and keep people guessing. How does your mom feel about being referenced so many times? Well, I had to tell her that he's he's saying mean things about her. Or not so much mean things about her, but my mom's usually asleep during Raw. Okay. <laughs> and then she'll watch it on YouTube. Or the Someone she works for is a big fan. will tell, tell her about it. Uh, she works at a dental office. I'll tell her all about what's going on. But she got caught up pretty quick because she printed Mama Road shirts uh, for my dad's foundation, which they're doing a signing at WrestleCon. So she's got those shirts to sell. So she's in... But I also think, just as a mom, I think anyone who's gone against me in a sense of trying to get this one thing, trying to get this one thing, she's, she's out to fight. And, I, and, and, and Rock may intimidate so many other people. Hell, Rock might even be able to intimidate me. Cannot intimidate Michelle Runnels, cannot. Just, just not gonna happen and I, I look forward to whatever that moment is. Uh, if, if there is a moment, he's getting nowhere near her at WrestleMania, but we'll see. Speaking of moms, though, I, I, I The Rock's mom, hmm. right? Here's what you need to know about The Rock's mom. Are you ready? You all ready? Yes. She's a lovely lady. Absolutely one of the kindest people. When you see her at a show, she brings huge energy. She always brings friends and stuff. Love her. Lovely lady. Would never say anything negative about her. Will your mom be in attendance? Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, the 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 Runnels Roads, Reeds, Gurgles, Hubers, yeah, they're they're all they're all the same exact crew who came last year. They, 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 they're, they're back this year. Your wife responds always on, on Twitter afterwards. Oh, yeah. Is there a chance that she gets involved? Uh I don't know if involved is uh is the 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 right way <laughs> to put it? Uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't want her. You know, wrestling is is violent, no matter how you look at it. Uh, I wouldn't want her to be in that harm's way. But I I do think. I guess this is a little scoop. Final stop of the day. Uh, I I do think you will see Brandy. Okay. Um, at at WrestleMania, and to me, and I'm not going to get choked up. I haven't gotten choked up all day. To me, that will mean a lot. Uh, 
that woman uh, got hugely uh, scapegoated and hugely just misinformation and everyone knows who they are that was involved with it. And if ever there was a moment for her to just feel like a princess and feel like somebody who did a lot more for wrestling. There's so many people working at AW who she was the one who said their name. She was the one who wanted to keep them in the fold when something went wrong. And for how, how she was treated after the departure, and this is not by any company, just in general, uh, it pisses me off to this day. And I look forward to just, she had a great experience last year at WrestleMania. She felt that love again. And uh, sorry. No, I understand. I look forward to that just because I could not do this without her. Like, gosh, couldn't play this game. I know there's no crying in wrestling. I think uh, Inferno Disco said that or Russo maybe. But, yeah, I, 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 I didn't cry, boys. It's okay. When you say she'll have a presence of some kind. That's all I can say. Okay, That's just the scoop. I, 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 Jeez, man. But will she be Jeez, sitting in the front dog. row or will she have like. No, I don't. You know. Sorry, it, sorry. I think you'll see her. Okay. You know, I think, I think you'll, I think you'll see her and that, that's special. Okay. Any worry? And we're, we're rounding third here. So the, you know, you'll be done in a moment. I I'm promise. not trying to get out. Okay. No, Are I they just, trying to get me out? Well, I know we, we have a, a two o'clock um, and we do need to rematch in the darts. Yeah. That's... Also, you got to talk about mixed martial arts at some point. No, we don't MMA care about that. Hour, no, you know we, what I'm saying? I don't like to talk about, you know, work fights. I like to talk about the real stuff. I love though that every time you say that and then I'll look at the comments on your show, most people are pretty positive. Yeah. Like, what do they want to hear about right now? What's happening? There's nothing bigger than this. Yeah, so the fairness, there is nothing bigger than WrestleMania 40, but is there something we can plug from the MMA side of the no, world? No, don't worry. You know what's the funny thing about that? And I don't want to waste time on this, but, like, my show is four to five hours long. Yeah. I do, like, 14 hours a week. There's not enough Excuse news. me if Cody Rhodes wants to come by yeah. and uh, plug WrestleMania. They're going to be high right? when The Rock shows up eventually. Oh, my gosh, yes, I yeah. can't wait. Three o'clock. Um, unannounced. <laughs> Imagine. Um any worry, like as someone, you know, you talk about the stress and everything. Last yeah. year was one match. What you do is physical, as you just said. Yeah. Two matches. Not worried at all. No? No, I wrestle every weekend, and I'm not the type of guy who's going to go, I'm there every weekend, and they're not. But I am going to say it in the sense of when it comes to stamina and endurance, uh, there's no way to train for wrestling like actually wrestling. Uh, I think Roman knows that actually more than ever, and he tries his damnedest to gear up for these main events, and he's been more successful than anybody ever in in our game when it comes to these main events. The Rock, absent from the year for absent from the ring for twelve years or whatnot, total unknown, could absolutely be in there at a Ricky Morton like speed, and and it wouldn't surprise me. I can already tell you he packs a hell of a punch, but. I do this on the regular. I've got full-time lungs, and I think the type of match on Saturday that we're going to have lends itself to me. I really do, and I think that'll leave me hopefully open for a fair fight Sunday, strip everything away. And I think, I think Roman Reigns also wouldn't mind if it was a fair fight hmm. because I feel he has something to prove too. But I say that, and the same guy who screwed me last year, so we'll see. Your relationship with Seth, how is it? I like to think he's my, well, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, like you're, you're bonded over people you have these significant memories with. So we're going into WrestleMania 40, the main event, his first main event uh, together. Uh, main event with the guy I came back and wrestled, returned against, with the guy who won the first NXT title, and my dad handed him the belt. I got Seth and I uh, these Rolexes. Whoa. Yeah. So they say. Oh, there's a 40. 40. Wow. I don't yeah. want to touch up no, my paws on it. It's quite all right. Well, okay. Wow. It's quite all right. That is beautiful. Yeah. So we, we're bonded. Yeah. We're, we're bonded by our, our, our wrist wear, you know? Only our you and Seth have Our timepieces. Our timepieces. These, these rollies right here. Look at you. Yep. So we. But only two so made that, of those in the world? There, there, are, there are more than two. Okay. I can't say who all, who all has them, but uh, there are more than two. I will say uh, I was really excited to give it to him because we will forever be competitive against one another, but we don't have to not be uh, respectful and even friends. We, we, can, we can be that. Uh, my dad and Ric Flair were at each other's throats it, all, for years, years, two decades. They were at their best when they were at each other's throats competitively, but they remained 
loving and respectful, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Loving. I just use the loving. No, it's great. I mean, you Jeez. are in a loving mood right, mood right now. Uh, I just saw you gave uh, edible arrangements to the uh, the makeup team. Yeah, they didn't go over as well as I thought. No? No. I feel like they're all healthier people than I assumed. But isn't and it just fruit or is it like the chocolate covered? It was covered? fruit, chocolate covered strawberries. Okay. I think there was some honeydew. It was a pretty big spread too. We moved it right by them to see if they'd be into it. I think it got enough play, but it's the season of WrestleMania is like the season of you take care of your locker room, you take care of your peoples. Uh, so I've been very much in a like Santa Claus like mood with you got to take care of all your team. They got you here. You know, Rock's got his 80 people, like I mentioned. He's taking care of them. They're getting Papatui kits, wow. you know, Terramana, all that stuff. I got to take care of my people. Uh, last thing, is there one match either Saturday or Sunday that you must see? Strip away the, the, the athlete as just a fan of what they're doing, a fan of the story. Is there one match that you will need to be by a television? Hmm. Man, I feel like I want to say every match, but it sounds like a shill. Uh, I'd say Becky and Rhea is one, and then also Gunther and Sammy. Uh, Gunther is the type of wrestler that I I want to wrestle mm. and would test myself against. And I'm at all times impressed by his continued growth because you think he's like amazing now. He's only getting better. Like he continues to get in better shape. And I know there are people who effort shame, but it's a vanity business. That's part of it. Like he gets in great shape and he's, his, everything in the ring is crisper and he's just meaner and badder and just like just a true bruiser. Uh, so I, I just have a, such appreciation for that. He's up against one of the most just outstanding, I don't want to use the word, but artist, you know, that, 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 that there is in, in, in a Sami Zayn and, and Sami who just refuses to not be interesting, you know, and that, that setup's really unique. But also I say Becky and Rhea because uh, I think the man is, uh, all the respect in the world, Rhea Ripley is my other cover star. I just think Becky is in a position where right now, fans might have forgotten just how unbelievable Becky Lynch and the man is. Because I watched from afar. I watched from the indies and other companies when the man was happening, the blood, the whole deal. Nobody was catching on with fans in an organic way like that. Nobody, no man, no female, it was Becky. And I think, again, the first women's main event in a WrestleMania history, I just think that she's bringing it with extra, extra fire. Uh, please get her book. Uh, it's a great book. I bought 20 of them. Wow. 20 from Amazon, by the Man. way. They came right away. I bought 20 because we did uh, the kids at the Nightmare Factory were going to give the books. So a little, a little, a little homework reading. So, yeah. Those, those two, I also have loved what Ricochet's been doing lately, so mm -hmm. following him, uh, keeping, keeping my eyes on him. Uh, I probably won't see any of it, though. Just probably locked in. try to lock in. Yep. Okay. Uh, speaking of locking in, we have two minutes for uh, a rematch. Do you really want to do it? I want to do it because I feel like if you beat me, then it'll be a good sign for this weekend. Because you didn't win last No, time. don't put that on. <laughs> don't put that. No, no. The so old, we're just going to grab these. I, I don't want to hurt you guys. The old Julian but, Bashir. Here we go. Here, here it is. Go. Listen. Can you go first, though? Um, or is that a, a you rule? Know, I, just to prove to you that I respect you so much and like you so much yep. and that I am rooting for Thank you. you. I don't usually go first because I feel like I'm the A side and the A side always goes second. Yeah. I will give you oh, the man. honor. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I just kind of want to, because I'm not a darts guy. I know, but you've been talking about it. And this has been, honestly, the we most didn't bring anticipated. The, the last time we did the BT. Well, you know, I was, I don't work for them anymore. That's probably the reason why. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to do a practice. This is a professional board. I don't know if you noticed, we've upped our game here. It's Brandon. Oh, See that? It is. Brandon. Okay, here we go. Well, that's how you know it's serious. Do, do you remember how to play? You have to throw the dart on all the right. board. Okay, all right, here all we right. go. Here we go. Uh, three, and then we add them up. Me versus the double headliner. Oh, oh man. Uh, that's just a third. Guys, team. come on. Oh, I tried to go for the triple 20, Joe. Oh, I tried to go for it again. So you, you got it, man. Four, 24, 29. If you can't beat that, then we've got problems, all right? Here he I felt is. like it was a good throw. Yeah, Again, but it wasn't, I, don't, I didn't get it on any of the doubles and triples. I don't play darts. Here we go. Oh, already, can I just say, you're yes. a righty? 
Yes. Put, put the right foot forward. Thank you for See, the I'm tip. helping you. Thank you. Your shoes look fantastic. They are Way better than mine. Okay, what do we got? 17 already. What did I get? 29, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay, Joe. 21, 21. You got it. <laughs> are you nervous? Yeah. I'm I, nervous for you, honestly. I'm nervous. I just want to, you know what? I just got to go. Yeah, just lock in. Oh. oh, you killed me. Did I get you? That's a 25 right there, plus a four is 29, plus whatever 17 is. Dog, this is my show. You did it. You I did, did it. it. Now I know he's winning. I did it. This is now my show. Please, have a seat. I did it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I there did it, guys. Is. Oh, you look fantastic. I appreciate everyone on the MMA hour letting it be the wrestling hour for the time that they did. I hope everyone watches WrestleMania. Ariel's a great guy. Thank you all very much. Your darts champion for 2024 is out. Cody Rhodes. There he is. Uh, watch WrestleMania Saturday, Sunday. Peacock. It's going to be great. Uh, we'll throw to our interview now with Punk. Thanks, we'll be man. right back. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.